Okay, gonna give this a second try. To give you a little bit of history, I made this great video about hurricanes, explaining it with, with pictures and stuff, and then um, when I played it back on YouTube, it turns out I didn't have my microphone on. So we'll give it a second shot. Um, I don't, it's probably not gonna be anywhere as good as the first one, so we'll see. Um, and again, uh, you're gonna have to bear with my poor artistic skills. This is the United States. That's why I label everything, because it's hard to tell what my things are here. This is South America. This line represents the equator. And this strange-looking object over here is Africa. And so our topic is going to be the topic of hurricanes. All right, Hurricanes go by other names, typhoons, cyclones. And, uh, and here where, where we live, it's called hurricanes. Now, the thing about hurricanes, um, it's just... A, a monstrous storm and it starts off as something called a tropical storm and these tropical storms feed off of warm moist air and we've learned um, from our um, studies about storm formation that it's the same thing it warm moist air rises and it creates condensation and precipitation hurricanes start exactly the same way and it happens at the equator because that's where you get the warmest and most most moist of all air and um, because of trade winds from the south the trade winds here kinda go to the equator and then bend off to the left because of something called the Coriolis effect that we learned about. And then um, from the north, it's going to approach the equator and take a right turn because of that same Coriolis effect. So when these winds converge, what you end up with, and I'll draw this down here, um, if we were to take kind of a, a different view of it, where the air would be crashing toward each other, each other and converging, well, these air masses pushing toward each other are going to come and they're going to force force each other up right there's they're going to have nowhere else to go but they're going to rise and when that happens you end up with clouds and precipitation um, well what we end up with with a tropical storm because it is so warm and so moist we get these you know monstrous storms called a tropical storm and so um, it travels along the equator, and it just continues to feed from you know this never-ending supply of warm, moist air. And the warm, moist air feeds it, feeds it, feeds it, and when it, I think, I'm going to have to double-check. Double-check in your book for me. I should have the notes in front of me. I don't. When it comes to about 74 miles per hour, then then it is considered no longer a tropical storm it's considered a hurricane alright so um, that's kind of the beginnings of it um, these converging air masses rise and just like in, in any storm the rising warm air condenses and um, starts condensation and the whole process of storm formation um, with the updrafts and the downdrafts and etc and, and the lightning and everything that we've spoken about before but the difference is it grows and it grows because the amount of energy that it gets from the warm moist air from the ocean just continues to feed it All right, now to continue um, as this uh, hurricane travels and I'm gonna try to <laughs> alright this is my hurricane that's not too bad okay there's my hurricane and you can see that it's going in a clockwise direction. Hold on. I'm sorry, it's going in a counterclockwise direction. It's going this way. And again, that's due to the Coriolis effect. And if you're not sure why and if you're confused, go over that video again. And I explain how uh, the rotations go to the right, but with a low pressure system, this is to the right, even though you would think it might be going to the left. All right, I don't want to confuse you more. Take a look at that video. And so it's going to, um, it, it typically heads to the west, and 
where it goes as far as the US all depends on this area right here right in here so if there's a high pressure system that's small if there's a small high pressure system out here then this storm will follow right up the coast however what's often the case or what seems to often be the case that the high pressure system just off the coast of uh, of the Atlantic is going to is usually high or larger and that high pressure system prevents the hurricane from traveling um, up the coast and so that's when we get these hurricanes that strike Florida and then you know it it, it feeds its way into the Gulf of Mexico and all, all, all the time it'll hit these these southern states just like Katrina did years ago um, and so again what feeds that hurricane is moist warm air and eventually when it hits land or if it goes further north in this direction uh, where the air is much cooler it runs out of that fuel so when it no longer has that warm moist air to keep feeding the storm uh, the hurricane will eventually dissipate or you know or die out but in the meantime um, you know that warm moist air is the fuel that pushes that hurricane and it and, and if you look at my picture um, I mean that's that's pretty typical size and if you compare that to um, the size of Florida you know it's larger than the size of Florida a hurricane can be you know hundreds of miles wide where a, a tornado um, although devastating is very small and very um, very quick it'll live and die very quickly a hurricane will last and last and it's it's huge um, it'll you know it'll cover you know many states where a tornado will uh, live and die within minutes and could be as small as the width of a car uh, so a hurricane have hurricanes have a lot of devastating power involved with it um, a lot more for me to t explain about hurricanes uh, see me on the next video hurricanes part two